Today, I want to talk about fear. No, not the 1996 psychological drama starring Mark Wahlberg and Reese Witherspoon set to the musical stylings of not one, but two Bush songs. No. Today, I want to talk about two things that strike fear into the hearts of many. Math and cooking rice. We begin with math. In the kitchen, a ratio implies something universal and scalable. For instance, you can make a nice vinaigrette with three parts oil to one part vinegar. That means that a vinaigrette made with three tablespoons of oil and one tablespoon of vinegar will taste the same as a triple batch made with nine tablespoons of oil and three tablespoons of vinegar. That's a good ratio. Rice ratios? They're not good ratios. I'll explain. Let's say my normal rice ratio is one cup of rice and one and a half cups of water. Now when I make a batch of rice like that, it comes out perfectly. But now I've got friends coming over and I need a triple batch. So my ratio is one to one and a half. I triple both sides of the ratio and I get three cups of rice and four and a half cups of water. And here's what I get. Here's my original recipe, perfect intact grains. Everyone is tender, there's not a mushy one in sight. And here is my triple batch. It's pasty and porridge-like, all of the rice is overcooked. What gives? I went to culinary school, I learned these ratios from a book, and I've cooked professionally for years. What am I doing wrong? Well, the truth is, I've been lied to about rice ratios. We all have. But I'm here to tell you, it's not your fault that you're not good at making rice. In my research, I talked to rice producers, and I learned that in the industry, it's understood that rice absorbs water in a one-to-one -one ratio. That means that regardless of the type of rice, one cup of water is enough to fully hydrate one cup. So what's the point of that excess water in every rice ratio? Well, it's there so that it can go away. Water in excess of the one-to-one -one ratio is included for evaporation during cooking. To put this theory to the test, I got my hands on 17 different kinds of rice. Short grain, medium grain, long grain, white rice, brown rice, red rice, black rice, arboreal rice, jasmine, basmati, you name it. After rinsing all of the rices to remove excess surface starch, I combined one cup of each with one cup of water in a vacuum bag. I sealed the bags so no water would be getting in and no water would be getting out. I then dropped the bags into a 200 degree water bath and cooked until the grains were tender. I then emptied each bag into a bowl and noted first whether there was any water left in the bag and second whether any of the grains of rice were mushy or still hard. I was pretty blown away when I found that every single grain of rice in every single batch was perfectly cooked. Okay, so if we know that in the absence of evaporation, a one-to-one -one ratio works for all types of rice, can we explain why doubling a traditional rice ratio ends so badly? Yes, we can, with a little bit more math. Let's look at our previous ratio for rice. So we have one cup of rice and one and a half cups of water. That means we have one cup of water to cook the rice and half a cup for evaporation. If we make a triple batch, the ratio tells us it's three cups of rice and four and a half cups of water. So three cups of that water is for cooking the rice and one and a half cups is left over for evaporation. But here's the thing, that's 150% more water for evaporation. And that is not how evaporation works. Over a similar cook time, the one cup batch and the three cup batch will evaporate basically the same amount of water. So we don't need four and a half cups of water, we need three and a half three to cook the rice and a half a cup for evaporation. So our new ratio, three cups of rice to three and a half cups of water. Now, understandably, not a lot of people love to do math at dinner time. So most folks reach for an electric rice cooker. One of the reasons that rice cookers work so well is their designers know exactly how much water they're going to evaporate based on the size of the vents and the cooking program. So if you follow the measurements on the cooking insert, you're good to go. Rice cookers also have an advantage because they know exactly when to stop cooking. In most rice cooker models, there's a thermometer at the bottom of the cooking insert. Now, as long as the temperature does not go over 212 degrees, which is the boiling point of water, the rice cooker keeps cooking. Once the temperature notches above 212 degrees, the rice cooker knows that all the water has either been absorbed or evaporated, and so it switches over to a keep warm setting. It's an elegant bit of design, and it's something that we can actually steal and use for our own rice cooking purposes. I'll show you that in a minute. But there's another way around the math, and it is called the first knuckle trick. So here's how it works. You pour your rinsed rice into the pot, and then you add water until it comes up to the first knuckle on your index finger. Then you cook your rice, and it comes out perfectly. And that might sound crazy, but it actually works for a lot of people. So let's take a look at how that's possible. So let's say we put one cup of rinsed rice in a small pot, then we add one cup of water. That nets us our one-to-one -one ratio. So we know we need a half cup of water for evaporation, but instead of measuring that out and adding it, I'm gonna use my knuckle test. So I'm gonna add water until it hits that first knuckle on my index finger. Now if I strain this off and we measure the water, it actually comes out to about one and a half cups. Pretty cool, right? 
but it's not infallible. So obviously people have different size fingers and that could affect things a bit, but the bigger issue is if you change pot size dramatically. So let's do this experiment again using a Dutch oven, which is arguably a little bit silly. I add my rice, I add a cup of water, and then I add water until it hits that first knuckle, and I end up with four cups of water, which we know is way too much. The first knuckle trick works great for cooks that establish a ratio that works for them in a pot that works for them, and then they repeat that over and over. Okay, I think it's time to head into the kitchen and put this all together. For most folks, a good rice ratio is one cup of rice to either one and a quarter or one and a half cups of water. So pick a pot that will be your rice pot if you want it to have a nice tight fitting lid. Then make a batch of rice with each ratio and pick your favorite. Now you have two ways to put this information to use when you wanna make a double, triple, or quadruple batch of rice. One, add your rice to the pot with one cup of water for every cup of rice. Then add your half a cup of evaporation water or a quarter cup if that was your preferred ratio. But if you don't wanna do any measuring at all, you can establish your own first knuckle trick. Start with your winning ratio. I've got one cup of rice and one and a quarter cups of water in this pot and it comes up to here on my knuckle. That's why I've got this line permanently tattooed on my left index finger. I'm kidding but don't think I haven't considered it. Once you have your own first knuckle trick established, you can simply pour rice into the pot and then water until it comes up to the level of the rice. Then gently shake the pot to level out the rice and add water until it hits that line. No measuring required no matter how many people you are serving. Oh, and remember when I said that we could steal from rice cooker technology? Well, this is what I'm talking about. After you bring your rice and water to a boil and lower the heat to a gentle simmer, cover tightly with foil, you can even add binder clips like this to seal it in place, then add a probe thermometer. You want it to go down into the pot until it touches the bottom, then pull it up ever so slightly so it's not touching the bottom. Set the alarm for 214 degrees. When the alarm sounds, your rice is done. No guessing or timing required. Then you simply remove the binder clips and the foil, place a folded dish towel over the top to catch any steam that would otherwise condense and drip back down onto the rice. Put the lid on, let it sit for about 10 to 15 minutes to firm up slightly. And then we just scoop our perfect every time rice into a small bowl. I like to shake on a little furikake, which is a Japanese rice seasoning mix. And this is how to eat rice. Do you love rice as much as me? Are you contemplating the first knuckle trick tattoo? Well, let me know in the comments and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. We'll see you next time.